This is the most expensive African car ever made. In fact, Africa is home to a bunch of car companies, and today we're ranking the most expensive sold by these manufacturers. Starting with the bottom of the list, the Wallace Car Iris. This boxy SUV from Tunisia, it's like a little bit of a Rivian R1S that had a baby with the Hot Wheels, mm. or a better boxy Jeep Renegade mixed with a Patriot. Yes, very cheap white. <laughs> Looks like a toy, and your only option for this machine is a three-cylinder, 1.2-liter engine that pumps out a whole bunch of 82 horsepower. Wow. It's got a five-speed manual, and you can allegedly hit a top speed of 98 mile an hour. That might sound a little slow, but let's be real. Do you really need to go 98 mile an hour through a Tunisian Sahara? In this thing, I, I think I'm fine with it. Yeah, I don't, I don't know about that either. So uh, maybe it's okay. I wonder what the ride height is. Uh, it doesn't look very high. Um, <laughs> Those rockers. Honestly, dude, like it's funky looking. It's got a bull bar. It's charming. It's got it over fenders. You know, yeah. it's got really wide fenders. It looks like the roof comes off. It's got a light bar. I mean, it's got everything you need, but I wonder how much this thing costs. Well, a Wallace car wants you to have options, Justin, which means your choice between 14, 15, and 16 inch wheels, plus a slew of paint jobs and everything from Barbie pink to fluorescent green. Mm. And look, you might not be the fastest driver in Tunisia, but you'll be looking hot rolling up to the Barbie movie premiere in one of these, that's for sure. <laughs> Starting price for one of these, just below 15,500 bucks. That's 45,000 Tunisian dinars. Oh, okay. About the cost of a 20 year old Jeep here in the US, but things are only gonna get pricier from here, I promise you. Next up, we have yet another SUV designed to take on anything Africa's roads have to throw at you. Mm. This bad boy is called the Mobius 3, which looks like Kenya's answer to the Jeep Wrangler. Another Jeep. There we go. Mobius 3 is a strong name. It's Mobin time. It looks like a Land Cruiser and a Jeep Wrangler. Yeah, Range Rover in the front, Wrangler in the back. Doesn't look bad. I can see this here in the States. It's not bad. No. Very Jeep-like wheels, too. Honestly, it just looks like a Photoshop Jeep. <laughs> Come to fruition. It's pretty close. Yeah. <laughs> Justin, tell me about this thing. It's front double coil wishbone suspension and five link coil springs in the rear makes this thing a perfect vehicle mm. to go hit the dunes with the bruise. And it's got five seats, one for each of the donut hosts. Oh, I'm sure we'd all love to be crammed into this thing. Honestly, why not? The Mobius 3 does come with a few options. Manual is standard, but you can offer an automatic transmission standard for a standard extra cost. As usual, you can also choose a diesel engine instead of a gas engine if that's more your style. Justin, I feel like you'd probably go that direction. Mobius doesn't offer a huge spec breakdown, but it does claim that the three can make 215 horsepower and 236 foot-pounds of torque at only 4,500 RPM. Pretty diesel-like. Yeah, like. that's very diesel-like. They also advertise a 12-inch touchscreen with USB phone mirroring. I mean, it's just like, a, it's an extension it's like of your a, phone. It's like a dual screen? Yeah, it just does whatever your phone does oh, on the big screen. Oh, okay. As long as it works. The Kenyan car company took after Jeep in a lot of ways, especially when it comes to Mobius's options for the three. The standard option comes with a removable roof panel setup, and you can choose a specific level of window tint, which is kind of sick. Mm -hmm. You've got heavy duty floor mats, paint protection, tracking services in case the car gets stolen, and a high fidelity sound system with subwoofers and a warranty guaranteeing its function. Interesting. Let's say you want your Mobius 3 at its most basic. This bad boy costs under $28,000, but a fully kitted one will run you around 35K, and that's 4.9 million Kenyan shillings. That's a lot of shillings. By now, you're probably wondering, what is Africa's car industry actually even like? We all know a ton about manufacturers from America, Europe, and Asia, but no one is generally thinking of Africa when you talk about big automotive hubs. And why is that? It is a huge continent with a ton of industry and natural resources after all. Africa pretty much relies on imports for the bulk of the cars on its roads, with Toyota making up the majority of Africa's cars thanks to the ever popular Hilux. It's like the Tacoma, but not really. It's what the Tacoma wishes it was. Recently though, as materials and labor get more expensive in Europe, car companies have started turning increasingly to South Africa to improve supply. But the folks who actually live in Africa often struggle to buy the cars there thanks to lower wages, import fees, and really high taxes. People from countries like Morocco, South Africa, Kenya, and Nigeria are looking to buy their own domestic products or cars from companies like BMW or Chinese EV maker BYD that are manufacturing right inside of Africa. Hmm. The 
thirst for new local cars and not just secondhand cars dumped off in Africa after they've been used up in Europe means that we've seen all these new startups popping up within the last few decades. The whole electrification thing sweeping the globe hasn't passed Africa by either. And just like in the rest of the world, battery equipped vehicles are priced at a premium. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly why a little something called the Kira EV Smack has made our list. Smack, weird little looking car. It's the Hyundai Sonata Buick Alpha. The Smack <laughs> is a five seat sedan with a smiley grill from Kampala, Uganda. But don't let the name fool you, Justin. Okay. It's actually a hybrid, not a full EV. Oh. You technically can drive the Smack on electric power alone, but the battery won't get you a full 20 miles before it dies. Kind of like a McLaren P1, actually. Oh, yeah. It also limits speed to just about 50 miles per hour, and Kira doesn't share just how long it'll take to charge its 8.2 kilowatt battery pack. Pair that battery with the combustion engine, though, and one tank of gas will last a little over 300 miles before you'll need to top it back off. But you also get a top speed closer to 90 miles an hour. So what does this electrified sedan cost? Kira's website puts it at a starting price of only $35,000 or 128 million Uganda shillings. They must have like the single paper million. Probably. I most, mean, yeah, most likely, be, right? The actual price of our next car actually depends. The Nord A7 from Lagos, Nigeria is the only vehicle on our list that actually features a vehicle configurator that allows you to customize and order your SUV right on the internet. And uh, it goes right there. Look at that thing. Nord. These uh, headlights look very familiar. The fender flares also look. Wait a minute. Hold on now, Justin. Hmm. Hmm. Very similar cars. Dude, that's the same thing. It's just another Jeep. All right, well, we're talking about a pretty reasonably priced vehicle here. At its most basic, the 174 horsepower A7 starts just over $59,000. That sounds more, <laughs> more like normal prices for us. If you want to flex to your friends with all the options, you'll be looking at a price tag of $63,000. In Nigeria's currency, that equates to 47 and a half million Nigerian Nera. That's a lot of money. Yeah. Imagine going to a dealership, <laughs> you yeah, know? Yeah, be like, all right, <laughs> there you go. Suitcase full of money. Maybe like that's four carry-ons like, worth of that's money. That's like right a, there. yeah. Obviously, and, we didn't uh, learn enough about Africa in school. If you want to see us go to Africa, we'll go. Let us know down in the comments. Let us know what restaurants to check out. Justin, what if you want a little more of what the Nord A7 has to offer? What if you're looking for something a little classier with a little more mm? That's when you might want to upgrade to the next car on our list, the Innocent G80 from Nigeria, which also happens to be the first ever made in Africa brand to hit the market back in the late 1980s. Looks like a Suzuki Jimmy. Yeah. It's like a G-Wagon Jimmy. Those exist, right? Right there. Those are SUVs. Pretty, pretty cool combo there. Should go over to Africa, maybe Nigeria, see if we can get a Mobius 3 across the country, mm -hmm. compare all three of these boxy boys, mm -hmm. find out which one is the best. I want to go there. This 4x4 SUV has been compared to the Mercedes G-Wagon, thanks to its boxy looks and theoretical off-road prowess. That seems like a backhanded compliment right there. Yeah. It can go off-road, mm -hmm. but that comparison falls short when it comes to power, unfortunately. A base model G80 outfitted with a 2.4 liter gasoline engine will get you 137 horsepower, but if you have a need for speed, which I do, there is an optional 3.0 liter turbocharged engine that can get you 250 horsepower. Let's so, go. Compare that to the G Wagon's base of 416 horsepower, and well, you know, there's not much of a comparison at all. Yeah, but, but that thing costs like so much more than this. The Innocent G80 actually holds a special distinction on our list. It was the first ever locally made official state car in Nigeria. Back in 2022, Governor Chukwuma Saludo cruised up to his swearing in ceremony in a bulletproof version of the 4x4, marking the first time in African politician opted to represent a local brand instead of an imported luxury car. Very cool. Man of the people. But how much are we going to shell out for one of these, Justin? Uh... Too late. The innocent base price <laughs> is $60,000. If you account for an expensive bulletproofing modification, the governor's car probably costs upwards of $80,000. Dude, a turbocharged three liter V6, that's yeah. like many cars sold here in America. Yeah, looks cool. I like it. Now here's the point in our list where we deviate away from standard production, off-road economy models, and we get real conceptual. Our second most expensive vehicle on the list is actually an international affair, Ooh. thanks to a partnership between an Italian and South African auto firms. We can only be talking about the Zagato Piranha Z1. 
Looks like an Aston Martin. Looks like a lot of things, Justin. Looks like a Maserati in the front. Looks like a Shelby Daytona Coupe in the back. Ferrari-ish headlights. And it looks like a sports car is what I'm saying. Yeah, it's pretty. The, oh, no. the side vent accent kind of flows into the front. I like how it's almost like an inverse of the window as well, which is oh, kind of cool. Like an uh, infinity symbol yeah. almost. The mashup group that put together the Z1 had pretty high hopes for the machine, which debuted at the 2009 Geneva Auto Show. I was playing Halo 3, probably. I was as well. Look at <laughs> us. <laughs> Honestly, this thing looks impressive. It's GT-style body, definitely hints at that old world Italian influence, mm -hmm. and its sleek lines had car and driver comparing it to the Aston Martin 177. Hmm. Sevens almost look like a Z. Hmm. <laughs> you know, we're learning so much today. It's all about branding, naming, and changing a couple things. Like our merch. <laughs> But the most interesting part of this car, Justin, is that the engine was totally up to the buyer. You could, if you wanted, make Zagato stick anything under the hood. But for convenience's sake, most folks opted for a small block LS3 V8 from Chevy. When car and driver saw it in Geneva, it made 440 horsepower from its 6.2 liter Chevy V8. That's aiming for reliability, mm -hmm. you know? Reliability definitely is the name of the game, especially with something like this. Especially yeah. in Africa. Like any good concept, Zagato announced that they would only be making 999 Z1s, but fewer than a dozen actually came out of its South African production facility. Those cars, remember we're talking about steel two-frame chassis with bodywork things here, pretty much all made it to the United States, unfortunately, which also does explain the Chevy engine preference, I guess. Yeah. How much would a Zagato Piranha Z1 cost an interested buyer? Car and driver said Zagato was looking at a price tag starting around $70,000 without your engine, which is 1.3 million South African rands. Honestly, it's a good looking car. For the price? For 70K, because if they sold, say like a Jaguar motor in mm -hmm. that, Ooh. you know, mm -hmm. the price would just skyrocket. Mm -hmm. But the fact that you could put whatever you want in, that's actually pretty cool. Cool. Remember, we're talking about a steel two-frame chassis with a body thrown over it. It's not like something that would come out of Chevrolet or, okay. you know, Aston Martin or something like that. I think it's more of like a very nice, maybe factory five kit car, you know? Like those okay. are two frames with bodies over the top. That makes sense. Very similar to this. Every so often though, one of these bad boys hits the internet auction block. So if you really want to confuse all your friends, you can snag one up nowadays for about $125,000. That might not be too big of a price to pay if you want to reign supreme as the the only guy in your car club with an African vehicle. I could see Rob Dom buying one of these. That's a huge amount of money for something like that, dude. Yeah, think about it though. It was $70,000 brand new. Maybe. In today's money, that's almost cheaper than Maybe. brand yeah, new. Maybe, yeah, true. Just like this old tires treads, your hair can start to thin or recede. And for most men, hair loss starts around 35. But that's where today's sponsor, Peeps, comes in. Is that good? Keeps offers clinically proven, research-backed treatments that can cost half the price of a traditional pharmacy. They'll connect you with online licensed medical providers that'll help you fight for your hair goals. Whether you're looking to prevent hair loss, stimulate growth, or just take care of the hair you have, the best part is everything gets delivered straight to your front door so you don't have to go anywhere. Plus, you'll receive refill reminders ensuring that you never run low on the products needed to take care of those luscious locks. Okay, you're all done. Remember, hair loss stops with Keeps. Go to keeps.com slash donut media and get a special offer today, or just click the link below. See you next time. The next two cars on this list are made by a Moroccan company that goes by the name Laraki. The first one of their cars we'll talk about is the Fulgura. The design was based off of the Lamborghini Diablo and it has a quad turbo V12 pumping out 730 horsepower, has a top speed of 217 miles per hour and a 0 to 60 time of 3.4 seconds. That does not sound like an engine that works all the time. I actually quite like how it looks. So it looks like they took a Diablo, sent it to Celine to make it Somewhat. a Ferrari. Yeah. It does look like a F430 in the front a little bit. Yeah. Or a Grand Theft Auto car. But if you want to hit those super Supercar numbers, Justin, you're gonna have to pay supercar prices. To own one of these, you need to shell out $555,000. 55 burgers, 55 fries. You know the drill. That's a lot of cheddar. I would just go with the Lamborghini. Yeah, just buy one. the Lamborghini. I don't know, it's pretty unique looking. It mm. does look cool, but I, I'm it's almost sweet. certain it breaks a lot. But I can hear you asking, what's the most expensive African car ever made? That title goes once again to Moroccan car company Laraki with its Corvette engine epitome. What a name for a car. The epitome of African cars. The epitome of performance. The epitome of Africa. 
This is the most expensive African car ever made. This car is sort of based off the C6 Corvette, except it comes with plenty of added air slashes and pseudo airfoils, presumably to make its absolutely massive fender flares a little more aerodynamic. I'd say that the insane styling is the highlight of the epitome. Things got even more ridiculous under the hood. The epitome is outfitted with a Z06 Chevy Corvette engine with added twin turbochargers. At its absolute base, you're looking at around 1,200 horsepower, but if you fill that up with 110 racing fuel, you're gonna get about 1,750 from that big old honkin' American V8. Power figure like that puts it in between the 2022 Bugatti Chiron Supersport, Cento DHA, and the Rematz Nevera in terms of horsepower, making it one of the most powerful cars in, in the, the world. world. The epitome was the Rocky's third attempt at building a car, but it was actually the first to end up in production, although it was a very limited production. The first vehicle went to Moroccan American rapper French Montana, and the company made only one other one. It's right behind me, sort of. You might notice that this looks a little different than the Epitome, and that's because after six years, they refined that Epitome concept into this. This is the Sahara. They built two of these. The other two cars out there are built on custom chassis. This is built on a C7 Corvette chassis, so Laraki can show this car off at auto shows and to other clients without having to eat the cost of building a full demo car. The full cost of one of these Laraki Saharas is $2 million. So that's a pretty bold price tag for an African supercar that um, kind of, I mean, kind of exists. I mean, it's here, it's real, I can touch it. But hey, you know, uh, why not charge whatever you want if you know that uh, your client base is pretty small. All right, so special thanks to the Peterson Museum. If you're in LA and want to see some incredible cars, you got to come by the Peterson and check out the constantly evolving exhibitions they have upstairs. You can buy a ticket, come down here to the vault, see all the crazy stuff they have down here. Like the Loraki. So thank you so much again to the Peterson. Make sure you like and subscribe and also go to donutmedia.com, get yourself some new merch. We got a new shirt right here, new Cars Are Pain shirt with the red donut hit on the front and this awesome design on the back. This is uh, available in this natural kind of tan or black and white. Uh, they look awesome. Uh, see you next time.